So far, every game that I've tested on this mini PC is run at 1080p over 60 FPS, and that's all because it's actually got the Radeon 890mi GPU. It's a brand new Ryzen AI mini PC coming to market soon. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at the very first Ryzen AI powered mini PC that I was able to get my hands on. They're actually going to be offering two different models, the S7 and the S9. This one here is their higher end model, and usually when we get early units, a lot of these manufacturers state that these are prototype. That's exactly what they told me with this. Did run into a few issues here and there, but luckily it's about two and a half months out. So there is time for them to fix these issues before it becomes publicly available. But uh, I've got a lot to cover in this video. We're gonna be testing this little thing out, seeing how it games, running some benchmarks. But before we get into it, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft. But the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So like I mentioned, they will be releasing two different APU variants with this mini PC. The one I have here has the Ryzen AI9 HX370, so that's the top of the line one. They're also creating one with that HX365, and in my opinion, I would definitely go with that 370, because the 370 has the newer, more powerful iGPU with 16 CUs, but both of them are based on RDNA 3.5. Inside of the box with this unit, we get the smaller 120 watt power supply. Love the fact that they're going with these small power supplies on these mini PCs. We also get a few extra heat sinks for some M.2 drives in here because this actually supports three M.2 SSDs. But I did mention I ran into a few issues and one of those issues is the middle M.2 slot here isn't working on this prototype and the front USB 4 port is non-functional. So that's definitely something they're gonna have to fix before they start mass producing these units. Either way, IO up front here, we've got that non-functional USB 4 port and two USB 3.2 ports. And around back, we've got our power input, USB-C 3.2, as far as I can tell right now, it's not functioning at 40 gigs, so I don't think it's USB 4. Two more full-size USB ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet and dual HDMI. And when it comes to the overall specs here, the S9 AI is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. Based on Zen 5, we've got 12 cores, 24 threads, a base clock of 2 GHz with a boost up to 5.1. It's also got the AMD XDNA NPU up to 50 tops of AI performance, the Radeon 890M RDNA 3.5 based iGPU with 16 CUs, and this will clock up to 2900 MHz. And this mini PC has non-user upgradable RAM. They're gonna be offering a couple different SKUs from 16 up to 64. Right now, this is using LP DDR5X at 7,500 megahertz, but they did state that they could swap over to 6,400 to keep the cost down. So this is definitely the way to go here at 7,500 megahertz. And I'm not sure how much of a difference it's gonna make in the end if they go with slower RAM. But I know for a fact that other manufacturers who are gonna be releasing these HX mini PCs will be using SODIM. So I've been up and running with this system for a little while now, and this thing actually runs really well at the wattage they provided from the BIOS. There's not much tuning that I can do right now. Even something like x86 tuning utility isn't working. But as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370, 32 gigs at 7,500 megahertz. And I'll tell you, I think what we're gonna see here is a lot of these mini PCs with SODEM RAM. There are different manufacturers out there that use this LP DDR5 or DDR5X in this case, but I think most that we're gonna see hit the market will have 5600. Of course, we've got that new Radeon 890M iGPU. 16 CUs here, and I've got eight gigs of RAM dedicated here. I actually did it from the AMD software. So if you go into tuning here, 
dedicated graphics memory. So I've just set it up at 8, and uh, yeah, it seems to work really well like that. So again, I have tried out x86 tuning utility and a few other that we can usually take the uh, TDP up and down with these systems. But right now, this is in performance mode. And if I run a stress test with CPU-Z right here, we're at a 65 watt TDP. I know for a fact that this HX370 can go higher than this, but uh, with the performance I'm seeing right now at 65 watts, I'm definitely not complaining. And the first thing I wanted to check out here were some benchmarks. The first one we have here is 3D Mark Firestrike coming in with the 9,469. I also ran the Steel Nomad benchmark with 3D Mark 625. And finally, Time Spy with a 4,199. So this is definitely scoring a lot higher than the 780M, but we are at a 65 watt TDP. Not too bad for synthetics on an iGPU system, but we definitely need to get into some real world gaming. Jumping right into it with Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, FSR is set to balanced. And usually with the 780M, we actually have to run this at 1080, low, FSR at performance, Jesus. getting an average of around 74 with the 780M. But as you can see, we're up in the 80s right now with the 890M, and we didn't have to drop that resolution scale way down. I also wanted to see how Starfield would run, so we've got this at 1080p low, and at low it does take it at 50% resolution scale. We're also using the built-in frame generation, but with this setup here, we're seeing an average of around 78 FPS. It's been quite some time since I tested this game out on an iGPU, but I did want to see how it performed on the 890M, and overall it's really not that bad. We are at 1080 low settings with FSR set to balanced, seeing an average of around 72 FPS. So far with this Ryzen AI9 HX370, we're seeing some pretty decent performance when it comes to iGPU gaming for sure. Mortal Kombat 1 fares pretty well with this system, and I'm sure when it comes to other lower-end fighting games, you're going to have a pretty good time with it. 1080 medium FSR at balance. We can run this game at a constant 60 FPS, and you might notice a little bit of screen pairing. It's my game capture. Uh, it's actually set to 120, but the game only runs at 60, so we will get that. Horizon Forbidden West. 1080 low frame generation on. So on the 780M with, let's say, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, even at 54 watts in the ROG Ally, this game really falls on its face. Usually we do have to drop this down to either 720 or 900 on other iGPUs. Okay, so this one was pretty impressive. We're at 1080 high settings. FSR 3.1 is set to balanced with frame gen on from the settings. It's built into the game. It does function quite well on these iGPUs, but I haven't been able to see this kind of performance on an iGPU yet. Usually we do have to take FSR to either performance or take that resolution down. But with this little setup here, it's trucking right through. And the final game I have here is Red Dead 2, 1080 low, and with the slider bar in the settings, we're five clicks up from the lowest of the low. FSR, balanced, we don't need frame gen here, seeing an average of 76 FPS with this game. So far, this Ryzen AI mini PC is really putting down some great power. When it comes to the CPU side of things, it's going to get anything done. That iGPU is much more powerful than any other iGPU on the market. And I'm sure we're going to see more mini PCs with this chip here. And of course, we're also going to see mini PCs with that HX365. Now, the biggest difference here is going to be the iGPU. In this, with the HX370, we get 16 CUs based on RDNA 3.5. With the 365 variant, still based on RDNA 3.5, but it's got 12 CUs, kind of just like the 780M, 
It is a nice little step up, but it doesn't come close to the 890M, especially at these higher TDPs. And uh, of course, I would love to see a handheld gaming PC with a chip like this. I think we're probably going to see one coming out very soon, so definitely keep your eye out. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look at the S9 AI. And one of the big questions the company had was what kind of pricing should this hit the market at? This is going to be releasing within two months at the time of this video going live. They may do a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo. I'm not sure which one they're going to be going for. But again, they will be offering a 16 gig, 32 and 64, along with the lower end HX 365 variant. They were really looking for input, kind of feeling the market out, seeing what people would pay for something like this. So let me know in the comments below. Are you interested in a mini PC with this Ryzen AI 9 chip? And if so, what would be a fair price point for this thing to release at? I'd love to know your thoughts down below. And if you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.